debate. And on that note, I'd like to give the call to the member for Dawson. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Speaker. Um, most surprised the member for Maribyrnong to know that I uh, probably agreed with nearly 90 per cent of what he said there. Uh, uh, we are in this brave new world where uh, big data uh, poses a grave threat to individual rights and privacy, and uh, big data collected by government that is uh, enjoined with big business is probably the scariest situation that I could imagine arise for privacy and for our freedoms. Uh, the one thing that I didn't agree with Member Mar Maribyrnong for was the words that uh, this uh, work had achieved the right balance. Sure, I acknowledge that there has been um, a lot of discussion uh, between the government and the opposition uh, on this bill, which has taken out of the original bill a lot of the problematic areas. There have been Senate inquiries that have looked into this bill that have taken out a lot of the problematic areas uh, of the bill. But being better doesn't necessarily make it good. Um, there's a litmus test that we should have in this place when a bill comes before us. Did any of your constituents ever email you about government sharing data with different departments or sharing data with state governments or sharing de-identified data with universities? Did anyone ever walk into your office and ask you, as an MP, to uh, vote for this bill, that there was a problem there that they saw that, that necessitated this act or proposed act? Did anyone ever stop you in the street? Did anyone ever phone you or one of your staff members about it? And I'd say, by and large, the answer for every single person who inhabits this chamber would be no on this front. So why are we doing it? Where does it come from? And I've heard from the government and now the opposition the argument that well, you know, if there's a natural disaster, an extreme event, you know, uh, then we can um, easily get payments to people. Uh, if they don't have the data that they, you know, need to present to get that payment, we can look at Medicare, or we could look at something else, or something else, and, and and get their data for that purpose. But there's an old saying, and that is, hard cases make bad law. Uh, that is an extreme situation, and sure, it happens from time to time. It's still an extreme situation. I don't know that we need to upend our privacy provisions in this country for that extreme situation. I actually haven't heard another argument beyond that for this bill. I have not heard it. Uh, if it exists, I'd love to know. And what I really would love to know is an argument exi that exists for this bill that is actually one for the people for the benefit of the people rather than the benefit of government. Sure, as I said before, a lot of the problematic areas have been knocked out of this bill through the process that it's gone from, uh, from how it was drafted originally. But here's uh, some questions. Apparently the data that's going to go to external organisations, which would be universities for research purposes, are going to, is going to be data that's de-identified. How is it going to be identified? Can it be re-identified? Is there potential for that? I don't know. The data that's going to go intergovernmental, whether it's between, inter, uh, between Commonwealth government departments or Commonwealth states, I'm told that that's only going to be for the benefit of individuals and that that data sharing cannot be used for anything that is investigative, punitive or or any other negative sort of measure against uh, uh, a citizen. But what happens if it is? Sure, I mean, there might be a smack on the wrist for someone, but what happens if it is? What happens if it is used in that fashion? Uh, is the Commonwealth going to suddenly drop all proceedings against someone because the data was used in a way that, the, uh, that it shouldn't have been? I don't know. Uh, I hope that the, the, the answer would be that yes, that all proceedings against that individual would be dropped. But the fact is that we've got data sharing, so it could potentially happen. So I, I, I'm just very worried about this bill and the trajectory that we actually are going down. And it's got bipartisan support, this bill now. 
So uh, it doesn't have my support, Madam Deputy Speaker. It doesn't have my support. It might have bipartisan support, but I can tell you it does not have my support. And what's behind this, I fear, is the digital identity push. And I've got to tell my colleagues on all sides of this House, do not ever do that. Do not ever accept a national digital identity system in this nation. That will be the end, not the beginning. It will be the end of privacy in this country. What it will be the beginning of is big government intruding itself into our lives far too much. And I'm afraid that this legislation, having originally been crafted for the purposes of sharing data with private corporations, is also the beginning of something else. Because we can have all the protections in this bill right now, but 10 years down the track, what's going to happen to those protections? Where is this going to lead? Are we going to have data sharing between big government and big corporations? I don't want to be part of that, and that's why I'm stating right now on the record I do not support this bill.